now the all india neat pg 2016 17 question hai lucid interval typically where do we see i am very happy to see 131 seriously preparing students for the neat pg right so it is extradural hematoma acute extradural hematoma how does it clinically present typically it will be biconvex and it will be hyperdense any blood will be hyperdense that is the presentation of the extradural hemorrhage is what you need to remember whenever patient is having a hemorrhagic stroke always stroke mein kya uljhan hai aapke dimag ke andar isko thrombolysis dena ya nahi dena dena ya nahi dena if it is a hemorrhagic stroke you don't give if it is a ischemic stroke and the patient came in the golden hour if you do thrombolysis with tpa then the patient has a great chance to recover and to not suffer from neurological insult it's a very important decision so how do you manage a hemorrhagic stroke that is the reason whenever with the stroke features patient comes first thing what will you do non contrast ct you will do not contrast non contrast ct agar usme hemorrhage dikhaye to you will not give thrombolysis agar hemorrhage nahi hai to you will look forward whether he came in the golden hour and then you will basically if it is, a, if it is not a hemorrhagic stroke if it is a ischemic stroke then you will initiate the thrombolysis is what you have to basically remember so normal saline is a good iv fluid of choice in case of hemorrhagic stroke so first thing you should check for the blood sugar you need to administer normal saline hypotonic fluids are absolutely no no in the situation of hemorrhagic stroke then you treat the hypotension with pressors and if there is a hypertension usually hypertension may we jump and do it like an emergency but if it is a hemorrhagic stroke with hypertension you don't need to really do a emergent reduction of the hypertension that is an important thing and uh, suppose if it is a acute bleed in the stroke acute bleed not a chronic bleed acute bleed then there is a lot there is a logically it is correct to emergently decrease the blood pressure but otherwise generally you don't need to emergently decrease the hypertension so labetalol nitroprusside etc are all considered to be safe agents to bring down the blood pressure is what you have to fundamentally understand subdural hemorrhage neat pg 2016 ka question is due to injury to watch is a very very important question question number 5 so cortical bridging veins please don't forget ah, i am very happy to see shravani manoj shinde everybody you keep punching the answers then only you will enjoy uh, what you call um, the center session right now one more one month more later you are going to take the actual battle so you should be very much ready cortical bridging veins so typically you have the skull bone below that you are having the dura and uh, below the dura you have these uh, cortical bridging veins if they happen to injure there will be a diffuse venous edema blood hemorrhage over the surface of the brain which is called subdural hematoma is what you need to basically remember any sudden deceleration or a sudden acceleration of a movable head is the underlying cause for the subdural hematoma especially in the elderly person is what you need to remember berry aneurysm may what is the first cranial nerve that get affected it is the third cranial nerve which is the one compressed in the berry aneurysm so you should be very sure uh, please give me the board yes 146 online students for the neat pg chai pe charcha every day evening i will try to increase the duration of uh, the class from 5 pm to 
8 pm they will try to work until this next one month so that more number of topics and questions we can complete you all know vertebral artery combined to form the basilar artery basilar artery divides into posterior cerebral artery and basilar artery supplies the midbrain the pons and the medulla so this posterior cerebral artery typically in this area you get the um, cerebellar arteries which will be coming out so whenever there is a aneurysm of the posterior communication artery what the what is posterior communication artery where is it located you are having the carotid internal carotid from that you are getting the middle cerebral artery so connecting this posterior cerebral artery middle cerebral artery you are having posterior communicating artery from this the berry aneurysm arise and from the midbrain the oculomotor will be leaving third and fourth cranial nuclei where are they located midbrain so from here when the third cranial nerve is coming out it is the third cranial nerve which is compressed by this berry aneurysm leading to the oculomotor palsy is what you have to fundamentally remember